Hello, everyone. It is the August uh, report interest group meeting. Thank you for sharing the link, Ruth, to the document that we're going to be working off of today. And it is bug squashing week, 10 year anniversary. Woo! <laughs> And uh, so we're going to be looking at some reports bugs. I did do some preliminary investigations of some of those bugs that you tagged, Elizabeth. Thank you for putting that document together. That's awesome. Ooh, yeah. We have Andrea joining us today. Hello, Andrea. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm here for the punch the vendor session. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, we'll, we'll be gentle. Um, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can all like look at stuff together. Alrighty. Cool, cool, cool. So, um, like I said, I started to look at these does anybody have any any they want to start off with, or should we just go through the list one by one and see see how we're feeling? Let's go through the list. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Elizabeth. I was going to say, John has been kind of the lead on bug reporting for the Angular reporter. So yeah, John's doing fantastic. <laughs> I don't know if John has any that are particularly quote unquote spicy. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm oh, now. Can you yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah, it was a little weird. OK, perfect. Yeah, so I'm here today. There's nothing really um, that I'd like to specifically pinpoint. I think I've been doing a lot of that in Launchpad and uh, Mike Raylander has been great helping resolve some of these. And I see that some of them have been marked signed off in the in the agenda and stuff. So nothing really in particular that, are, that um, hasn't already kind of been gone through. Sweet. Uh, so this is an opportunity, everybody. Um, is there anyone, and you know, you don't have to feel um, uh, self-conscious about this because we were all there at one point, but like, is there anyone who doesn't know anything about Launchpad and needs like a little bit of a, a walkthrough about how that works? No judgment. All are welcome. This is a safe space. <laughs> Uh, can you add the link for that document I added oh. to the... Um, oh, that was the bug squash. The yeah. bug squash. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spreadsheet. Copy link. Here we go. I threw it in there. I had oh. it up. Oh, yeah. thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and I think all of the bugs that were loaded on Tiffany's server were already listed here, so I didn't add anything else. I was kind of going through, but I didn't finish going through like everything that had a reports tag. Anyhow, let's get started. And okay, so no way to select all options from a list. I think I did add some. Oh, nope. This is not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, when there's an in list option. I, I don't want to necessarily reread all of this, but. Uh, trying to get the the general um, the general uh, whatever it's covering. <laughs> I can't think of words today. It's uh, it's difficult. Um, but but anyway, um, so so this is like if there's a report that has an inlist filter. We want a way for there to it to be able to select all. Is that that right? <laughs> I 
I think it's yeah. more than just select all, though, isn't it, John? It's also select multiple. Select multiple. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that we lost uh, the way to select everything from a list or to quickly select multiples from a list. So it would be to bring back that functionality. Sweet. Yeah, that would be, that's very much needed in our consortium. And I added a comment to uh, to indicate that as well. So um, I don't know if, if you have any comments, Andrea, on like um, how Equinox, if Equinox is looking at these things, how they're looking at these things currently, um, you know, as, the, as they come up, because I don't want to necessarily put you on the spot for every one individually. Um, I just... Uh, Oh, good, because I personally yeah. wrote 0% of this code. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, um, we are looking into the ones that we can. And because it's Bug Slashing Week, we're certainly trying to get fixes for the ones we can out there. But it's also already in the community code base. So if other people have fixes, we're happy to review them as well. But we appreciate the testing and the feedback um, that we've been getting. And that one, sorry. That one looks related to some other work that is seven, being seven, done. Seven, three, five, seven. And I think Stephanie had a comment on there. I just closed that yeah. one. Um, she has a comment in the related bug. If you want to pull the, that up near yeah. the top. Yeah, let me see if I can. Oh, this one? Okay. Right there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at this one. I'm going to have to look into that one more. I don't have an answer for you at the top of my head. Sorry. No problem. Uh, I think the reason that I said that that Stephanie is looking at it is that generally speaking, when Stephanie makes a comment in there, that means she's added it to a list of her things to do or to look at. Uh, and I know that there um, is uh, a thing that has not is not necessarily related to reports and other than um, it could potentially like what's being done there could be do used in this uh that has to do with the select sorry i think i'm not looking at the same one you were looking at uh, we just kind of we just kind of yeah, switched. switched uh looking at two zero seven seven three five four is the one three, that five, stephanie four i'm looking at three five seven and i'm like i do not see a comment from <laughs> yeah yeah no the, we we just switched over because this uh, is related to that one but yeah. she does she or actually john in the comment above does link that three five seven um as part of that conversation yeah i would uh i mean i would assume based on the comments on these two bugs that they'll probably be resolved in the same way mm -hmm. um but i kept them separate for now just in case that's not the case but i do think they're very much related I'm yeah they're not like... actually using the same components though so they're not so it's no. a good thing you kept them separately mm -hmm. um and well yeah i mean we will i am sympathetic to the fact that there are things that that need to be fixed in angular reports and we will work on as much of it as we can but I also um, just want to, and I'm not saying that these fall under that necessarily, but just make a plea for this is this is the new version of Reporter, and um, there's going to be things that are that are different that might not necessarily be broken, but are just different. So when you're looking at things that are different, maybe bear that in mind. And again, I'm not saying that these two are examples of that, but just right. One and of it, my tasks this week is to go through and look at all of these old reporter bugs that are now irrelevant because of this work. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm not to say I'm not saying to curb your feedback. I'm not saying to not keep testing. Um, I'm just saying, you know, think about that when you're filing bug reports. But I will have to follow up on these two um, 
as I well. Was, I was, I this is actually my first day back from work to work after being unexpectedly out for several days. So I barely even <laughs> welcome. I, I, so, so <laughs> what I know from what my colleagues are doing on this is literally what you guys know in the sense that like, I have okay. seen what is on launch bed. Okay, that that's so. fair, Andrea. I, I I I'm very happy that you're here. I don't wanna. I I wanted to give you a chance to say whatever right. you wanted to say without. And that um, that's 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 yeah. my piece is that things are gonna work differently. <laughs> and as as users as testers, it's your job when you're filing bug reports to step back a second, and be like, okay, is this really a bug? And in which case, obviously, like in these, file a bug report, or is this maybe just different? And yeah, I, I would say for these these two right here, it, this would be an interesting thing for um, the new developers as well as the collaborative code reviewers to potentially look at if there comes to be a branch. I'm looking to see. Um, not necessarily a branch for the new developers, but a branch to look at for the collaborative code reviewers. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we're going to keep doing what we can on these bug fixes here, but bear in mind, it's also a release cycle. Mm -hmm. um, we have things actually for several That's of you nice. that I am looking at through the camera that are also kind of in the lineup for 314. And I want to make sure that, you know, we have my requests for developer cloning machines keep getting denied. And I'm real sorry about mm -hmm. that. Um, but so we're just going to have to balance that. But specific uh, feedback like these bug reports is super helpful. And I do appreciate it. Can I ask a question? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my smoke alarm just did its annual monthly test on it panicked um so um can we still access the old reporter quote unquote with like in an upgrade if we need to like in a pinch it's or is still the code... it's still there but there are apache redirects in place um so you would have to contact your evergreen support administrator to you know route those differently but we did not deprecate or okay. remove any of the old reporter code. Okay. But just bear in mind that, again, since there's new stuff now on top of that, that you're going to end up with the breakage the other way. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, we're, I don't think any, like the ones that we thought were going to be like blockers for us kind of have been resolved for the most part. Um, Good. But I just, this is a pretty itchy one yeah this is right a, here a, this is very itchy yeah. for a large system well yeah, yeah. which this one is one, that again is it's that a, the ability to select multiple um org units uh but it's it, or shelving locations or oh, yeah fire. this one is marked high importance yeah I, I'd say this. So one... I'm sorry. Which is which one is the itchiest? Because I just got two different answers. Sorry, they're both equally both. itchy. It's three five seven and three five four. It is the okay. ability. Both of those are very very itchy. I'd say they're they're kind of linked too because Stephanie Larry added the comments to the org unit selector one, mm -hmm. but really I believe her comments kind of apply a little bit more to the other bug, which is sure. kind of why I thought like. The uh, the final mechanism for this might be similar to each other, and it's it's very important for CW Mars. This is probably our this would stop us from using the new Angular reporter, the inability to select multiple or everything from a list. So, are you all planning to backport this this then the Angular reporter? Us. Yes. Uh, no, this is for when we when and if we go up to three thirteen. Got it. Okay, because that was gonna I was gonna say I can't <laughs> any fixes we post will be for three thirty yeah. post three thirteen and I can't uh guarantee yeah, no, their that, applicability. That, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Um Got so it. well and no I mean I will ask and I will clarify um since Stephanie is I don't think here to speak for herself that um sometimes when like just because she comments on something does not necessarily mean she's working on it. Sometimes she just sees something, knows something about it, throws a comment on her way by before she zooms off the next thing. 
So um, just for the general consensus, unless one of us is assigned to it or I specifically say so-and-so is working on this, then um, it's not necessarily the case that we're working on it. Of course. But I don't know. She might be working on this. I haven't actually spoken with Stephanie yet today. So uh, You're very brave. <laughs> look, <laughs> she's got many things uh many many chainsaws in the air this week i was I, I i needed to let things settle for a day and then we'll talk tomorrow at our weekly dev meeting and i will bring both of these to the you know to the dev meeting and for these and maybe this is premature but should we be looking at a um a reports blocker tag because i think we've had three or four large consortium pipe up already with one or both of these bugs and say that these are blockers for us moving forward. Because I think this would block us from moving to 313 or 314, just because the size of our org tree and um, being able to select multiple things. And I say that without having looked at Angular reports recently. Um, we looked at it several months ago, whenever we were doing the reporter security testing, which I don't remember when that was. So I know some things have changed, but yeah, based on these reports, this would block it for us. And I know uh, Taryn said in the comments of one of the tickets and in the chat here that it'd be critical for them as well. I think that anything that has blocker uh, in, included in the tag is going to amplify <laughs> the- I just, the, I don't think there is a report- There isn't on one, yeah. Tag. Mm -hmm. Do we need to create a tag or is this? I guess that's my question. Yeah, I mean, if, if there's only a couple of these that are blockers, is it really necessary to have a tag or, or is it just critical that Mike knows about them? I was, I mean, I, this is gonna sound cynical. I don't mean it to sound cynical, but if it's going to, attract necessary larger attention in the community sure put a blocker tag on it if it's just designed to attract mike's attention mike already knows about it right Maybe uh, it's we not should... from our pers from my perspective from ecox's perspective it does not make a single bit of difference but that's up to y'all if you think it will garner larger attention and like i said we'd certainly welcome other patches um and be happy to review them so um, what I was going to say is maybe we should continue going through these and see if there are any others that are blockers. Mm -hmm. And if it's really just these two, then we probably don't need it. And, and maybe we mark the other one as high as well and, you know, kind of go about our day. Uh, but if it turns out that there are a lot more that are going to be blockers, then maybe it's worth it. Does that seem reasonable? <laughs> And I, I feel like obligated to say too, I'm super impressed with the, the new reporter. I know that obviously yeah. there are always going to be things that have to be ironed out. And and there are, as Andrea said, there are some changes too, like something may be in another place or whatever. Um, it is very good. Very good. Very, very good. I, I also recognize but, that because of, um, I'm not sure how this happened because it was, it was in the branch um for the reports commit the documentation that for the new reports and somehow i don't know during squashing or revising or whatever testing and rebasing the commit for the reports got dropped which i didn't realize until about three weeks ago the commits for the docs rather so as of three weeks ago the documentation for this is actually now uh on the website or on the doc site which it hadn't been before then so i apologize i did not realize that 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 commit got dropped somewhere in the 313 lead up. Um, all right. They're working on that right now. Right, right. now is right now <laughs> is in speak. bold. I said, <laughs> please assign yourselves accordingly. Working on which thing right now. Item. So I don't know, maybe refresh the screen and see if they've assigned themselves. Um, to which one, Andrea? Both. Mike has assigned himself oh. to the. Oh, I see. Yeah. And I and would like to report that I heard him roll his eyes from Georgia when I said assign yourself to the ticket. So <laughs> that's cool. My special powers is I can hear Mike roll his eyes away, roll his eyes at me from many states away. All right. So hopefully that. 
Awesome. Makes you all feel better. Mm. Sorry for not knowing that. Um, but silly. there you go. I said, what about these two? We're working on them right now in bold. So, there you go. All right. Ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> nice. All right. I'm I'm gonna just make a note. Uh being this doesn't always on. work, by the way. Yeah, That's and if there enough. there is a, a new mechanism to select multiple things that doesn't involve like insider knowledge on how to use shift and command or, or control or command. That's cool. We'll be moving straight into the 21st century. Right. Although I always felt pretty righteous when I did that. So. All right. So it looks like this one had lots and lots of back and forth. And now that there, there is a sign off from John on it. And this is do, do, do. Oh, yeah. Can't edit the pre-313 reports. Yeah, this one was um, a big one. Mike and I have, have gone back and forth a lot on this. Um, but it was it was the inability to edit templates made before 3.13. And some of the transforms were a little funky in older templates, specifically with date and org unit. And so we went back and forth and everything should be resolved and working well there now. So I was very happy to add that sign off. Um, John, in your testing, were the old reports all ones created in the web staff client or were any of them ones that had been originally created in Zool? Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of ours. I'm gonna be honest. Were created in Zool, um, so okay, that's good I would to say know. <laughs> eighty percent of the templates I tested <laughs> with were in Zool, but I did include both in there, so it definitely works with both. So that was exciting to see it work with the Zool ones. Yay! Thank you. It's exciting. I'm kind. I like. Yes, it's exciting that the Zool ones will now be editable. But I was secretly hoping that we would <laughs> not fix that part, and we could. Say Stop goodbye. Using, so I could say goodbye to some Zool templates. <laughs> we're, but, we're, just because it can work doesn't mean it should work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're hoping to do a project in conjunction with our next upgrade to shift all of our shared templates away from Zool. Um, but time is a finite resource. So knowing <laughs> that we don't have to if we don't have the time is a um a good thing to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I I found too that um it's really easy to to clone templates in the New Angler Reporter. It's so much easier to clone a template and then make little changes to it. Mm -hmm. So it probably wouldn't be as big of a project as you might be thinking to kind of clone and update them for Angular. And so it I do like the new template editor in Angular. It works really well, and it's a lot um, more straightforward than the Angular JS or the Zool one was. In in relation to the Zool templates, um, I think the last time I looked at the Angular Reporter, it didn't indicate whether it was a web client or a Zool template. Is that still the case, or has something been added? It, it says template version, and it says I think either a four, five, or six. Oh, okay. And four is Zool, five is JS, and then six is Angular, from what I recall. Okay. That's I think good to know. Three, three is also Zool. Yeah, anything so, before four is Zool. Um, makes sense. Five is Angular JS. Six is the simple reports is in there somewhere. I think mm. seven. I forget. I don't know what six is. I can't remember what six is. Six might be a second version of Angular JS. Seven is simple reports, which is its whole own thing off the side but it does technically have a version number in the same way and then maybe this one is eight i can make a note to document those better yeah i was going to say is that if if that's in the documentation that would be really helpful for for admins awesome thank you all Uh, all right, so we already talked about this one, so I'm gonna skip that one. And this one, this one is, 
on Tim Tiffany's server, but there were some comments. So I think, yeah. So do we need to add a needs work tag to this this puppy? I'm sorry, which one are you looking at? Uh, this is 207-443. Except 207-7443. <laughs> This one kind of comes back to a bigger conversation um, with the bug that I just put in um, mm. about ultimately the reporter should probably actually have two documentation URLs oh, okay. because some people use it as documentation on how to use the template mm. and some people use it on, as documentation on how to use the output. Mm. and i'm not saying that this is something we need to solve right now but i'm just right. saying like this is a piece that the community maybe needs to think about um and i think some people try to use it as both but whatever url you use at least in the current reporter shows in the templates and also shows in the email that goes out um with the output adding this here and it's it's definitely a wish list thing but maybe something to think about when we're thinking about where we want the url to show up in angular i would i mean i think for consistency sake with the way people are used to using it it should be in the place where John suggested for now. And then maybe after the other one is built, then that might be rethought. Got a lot. Mm. Yeah, I'm down. We don't tend to use this terribly much at this point. Like, I feel like we should use it more, but we don't. <laughs> All right, cool. Are we are we satisfied with that? Do we want to move on to the next one? I think it's the one ending in 441. Yeah. All righty. Default template sort should be my name. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Yeah, this one is also where I learned that I was apparently the only one that had a deep and burning hatred for the name sort. <laughs> like, I honest to God, it was like one of my least favorite things the old reporter. Uh, I wonder if it's because so many of us work with our, sh like, how, we, how we've how we set up our shared templates. Yeah. Um, as opposed oh, in, to... Indubitably, because I'm sure it's because you guys are all setting them up for consortium and I was literally the only person running reports um so everything was like you know clone clone three clone 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 three um, well here's a long-term wish list uh item have like actual 
intentional, this is shared report set at the consortium level instead of the uh, workaround we've all created. <laughs> I think there might be a bug that has something or a you know a wish list bug that that has something to do with like managing templates at the consortium level but I can't remember off the top of my head where it is or there might be multiple like that I mean I think what we're all doing right now works mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to push back against nobody right now against the concept that we just have to put up with uh, case sensitivity being something that cannot be factored in sorting a text field because that's not the way that it is in many, many other applications. I get it in Evergreen but I'm just adding my two cents that we're essentially sorting two alphabets in that case, which is dumb. That's it. I had to say that out loud. Ruth, should we have a like overarching evergreen bug for that? Because I'm I swear I've run into that somewhere else and I want to say maybe the it's action probably in buckets or at action triggers. It's everywhere. Filter. Mm -hmm. It's um, filt It's the angular filters. And it's you. because of the way when they were implemented at the time, it was um, probably a shortcut as opposed to having to end up. Being I'm sure. I mean, it makes complete sense. It just saying that's the way that it is, is is a little flippant to me when we're talking about end user experience, but. Well, and I think it, as far as I can find, there's just one bug that actually talks about it and talks about that specific to providers. So if we think it's a bigger issue, we should probably either adjust that bug or. I don't know. I think it's an issue. I don't know if ever other people do. Um, I believe I, it's universal to the angular column filters mm -hmm. to that component, but. I agree that it's the way it function is anti usability. I'd be glad to put in a ticket if, if people feel there's value in doing that. I think so. I'm assuming I ran into problems when filtering and action triggers to remember that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's already signed off. Is that, that was this one. Okay. Uh, All right, another sorting one. <laughs> sorting folders. I haven't actually tested this one, and I wonder maybe now is the time to bring up Tiffany's test server and uh, and start poking at things a little bit. Do, 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 do. Uh, 
Um, at a guess, just from the ticket, the random sort could be database ID. Because I know we've seen it in buckets yeah and others. yeah so yeah that was my first thought too but it it's more random like it changes every time and that's what was confusing to me is every time you click the header the chain the the sort's different so if you was sorted by ascending twice you might not get the same sort that's and it's, really it's just reports folders. So the templates ones were fine. It's just the reports folders. Oh, just reports. Yeah. So was it, okay, let me read, actually read the bug here for a second. Da 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 da. A screenshot. see it didn't change yeah. the sort order right even though it should go the other way now right yeah and that's a random order too yeah hmm. all right we can add some heat to this. Already confirmed. Oh, yeah. Nullability selection. Do. Yeah, so this actually does an inner join instead of a instead of actually selecting it and you have to select over here. Is that is that right? Yeah, that's where my confusion came from is that the checkboxes were looked the same, but they did different things. Mm. And it's only obvious what the left checkbox does is if you hover over it and it will pop up. But other than that, oh, you don't know yeah. what it does. Mm -hmm. Does it not let you select the other types of joins? I think I remember this coming up when we talked about it i think the defaults have become more um standardized if i remember correctly i have only ever used inner yes. in a report yeah so well, this reported to the 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 the, the light horse, I, I, I cannot re recall exactly the function, but uh, it has a function if you check that uh, checkbox, like uh, you did in front of corner bra. If I remember correctly, it's, it's set to a uh, inner join or left join, probably inner join. Really sorry, that was a long time ago when I tested this. So it does something related to how the tables mm -hmm. are joined together. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I but I think that Jennifer, like right now, is right that the right now all it does is create that inner join, and I think if I'm remembering correctly, by default now everything is a left join because before what you had to kind of 
look at the IDL to figure out what kind of join it was. So now I think it's more streamlined. Oh, she's got it. Dun, dun, dun. Now a left outer join and the parent can have a null value in the linking Le field of the child. Okay. For those of us like me that have a hard time understanding L ability, Le Lena also put a very helpful little table there that shows the difference between what it would you would see in a default versus using null ability. Yeah, it's you have to scroll down a little bit. There isn't a header directly to that, but yeah, it's talking about it there. And then there's further information below. Hey, my presentation is linked to there. Who knew? Um. Uh, it sure is <laughs> because I, I've watched it six times. <laughs> We linked it into our docs. I was like, here's what I understand about nullability. Go watch this if you want to learn more. Here's a direct link to the nullability section if anybody wants to bookmark that. Cool. I do think having some kind of indication that the checkbox is for nullability would be very helpful for for end users in addition to the the hovering because uh in all in all honesty I'm I'm very unlikely to hover. <laughs> well and potentially that causes screen reader issues the hovering. Oh, yeah. No, because it's in the ARIA label as well. Okay. Wow. Excellent. Now, this is a Stephanie. This is a Stephanie list. Mm. I guarantee well, you, you, it's screen reader accessible. These are the things Stephanie has taught me to question. Oh yeah, no, I I trust me. I get it. I I now send her. She's probably sorry she told me about it at all. Cause now I send her examples in the wild. And I'm like, look at how terrible this is. Yeah. Um, I wonder if it would, like, if it would be as simple as for the display fields, if it was like a circle instead of a box, like just something visually different. Yeah, because that, that's where my main confusion comes from is I'd love for the joins to be more explicitly explained, but my main confusion is that the check boxes do different things. Mm. And so if one of the check boxes were to be something else, I think that would go a long ways. To, uh, to fix that confusion. So I also agree with Taryn and chat, and I think the joins should just be listed as inner or left. I think I think that's a lot easier to understand than nullability because the, the terms nullability never made a ton of sense to me, but the joins make a lot of sense to me. But actually we do have a uh, library staff using it. I think it will be hard for them to understand left drawing or right drawing. But I don't know, Tina, if they really understand nullability to start with. Oh, I, I, I can't assume you know how yeah. they understand this part. I would just like to add that we don't add because currently it's like inner, outer, and then there's children and parents. So if we if we stick with one set of terminology. Um yeah. and currently one of the options is parent nullable, which could be a right join. And yeah. is that just not something that we ever need anymore now that the default behavior is a left outer join? Because it doesn't appear there's a way to do a right join here. I believe it came down to the fact that I believe something like the vast, 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 vast majority, like a vanishingly small minority of ones 
reports needed that join um, in reality. And so that was part of uh, the decision behind making it, you know, the one that was used in everything to make it easier. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, of course, you can still and I make think that you, report in, S in SQL if, you know, you need to. It didn't. I really, it, it kind of comes down to where you start with your, your original source. Right. Because, like, you know, I've made lots of templates where I go, oh, well, I would resolve this if I just started with this other source, as opposed to just always starting from item. Um, so it, it, that that's another way to resolve it. You just have to start with the source that would be farther right if you knew that you wanted a right outer join. Yeah, I've never used a right outer join. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way it was always described to me was use the source that's quote unquote closest to where you want like the bulk of your data from. Like if yeah. you're reporting about an item, specifically items, use item source. If you're reporting about item barcodes, you know, you use barcodes yeah. or whatever. That's a bad yeah, example. The, yeah. Patron barcode would be a better. The, uh, the example that I can think of, uh, and I think... I think I might talk about this in my in my uh, demonstration is a, like uh, if you're talking about like something like notes based on items and you want to do like filtering based on those notes, um, you'd be better off starting from like the item note source and then like like adding your your stuff from the from the item table because that's kind of like the rightmost the rightmost table. Um, and uh, yeah, and you, you can, so the point is, I guess you can still get write out or join functionality, even if you don't have a way to make a write out or join from the sources, because we have all of these other sources in the reporter are exposed. So if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, I make it a point in my SQL to never use anything besides left and inner joins because then I think it just gets confusing. Yeah, exactly. um, so I don't I don't disagree with removing those other types. Um, I shared a screenshot in chat because one of the other tools we access our database with locally is this tool called Metabase, but there's other ones like Tableau and Google Analytics and things. Um, but it's common for there to like show a visualization of what the join is doing, yeah. um, especially with like, I always think of it as a Venn diagram. And so, like, if we could visualize the join somehow, that would be super cool. Even with just the little Venn diagram things, that I think that goes a long way into explaining what it's doing. And That's I can nice. attach that. Yeah, I can attach that screenshot to the bug as a possible idea. That's really nice. I like that. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um. <laughs> so this one was it was marked as a duplicate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip it because we we're gonna talk about that bug farther down, I believe. Oh no, we already talked about it. Okay. Um, column sort should be saved with grid settings. That's a new one I added after the default sort is name now. I added it for Andrea and for everyone else who uh, doesn't like sorting by name. Thank you. I, I confirmed it with gratitude. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. I also firmly agree with it, too. I think always sort order should be included in the grid settings. So I very much agree with that. Good deal. All 
I guess I got this bad boy. Poor actions can disappear when using browser's back button. Ooh, I haven't seen this one. Clone, edit. All right, let's take a look at this. Too many windows. So this was under reports, right? Yeah. So, and then we do a back. We lost some options. Interesting. All right, we can confirm that. I don't know if it's actually related, but we've also got some weird similar behavior in the organizational units, hmm. where if you switch between things, the delete button multiplies. Oh, it's just one of those like you know when you move around things appear or disappear that might be related to the bootstrap upgrade hmm. um it's been going on since three five then no it's not i don't know what i'm talking about good guess though <laughs> but just it's it, it just reminded me of that in the kind of like things when you move between interfaces things to appear or disappear unexpectedly hmm. you can get a lot of delete buttons if you want fun all right this is another one that's on tiffany's server I think I think the bottom three are the only three that are supposed to be visible, but okay. um, maybe I didn't word my comment clearly enough, but um, yeah. Um, da, 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 da. Do we have a little phone for her? Okay. Okay, we can take a look at something. All right. All right, so we're looking at invoice. Invoice. Hi, totals, invoice. I'm blanking. Oh, yeah. Invoice totals, invoice debits by fund, and debits by fund tag. Mm -hmm. But then Stephen mentioned all these others, but I don't think they're supposed to be visible. Yeah, no, he was. You're, you are correct, Elizabeth. Okay. So then he was I just can... looking at them in the IDL and painting okay. a broad brush. So, yeah. Okay, but I can. You are correct. Okay, I can then sign off on it because they are there now. Um, I didn't get to test them because I don't think it's the reporters running on our test server at the moment. So, but I can see them. We can test them probably on Tiffany's if yeah. you're so inclined. I would do it right now, but I will show my ignorance about how. Act is supposed to work, so I will not do that at the moment. <laughs> Actually, I was going to reach out to Madison, who's on this call, because they do a lot of ACK reporting. So, all right. 
and probably <laughs> act data needs to be added to Tiffany's test oh, server yeah. before we can actually report on it. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Untags don't get a lot of use, so I would highly doubt they exist there already. All right. Was that, which number was that? Nine. Okay. I'll just make a note. Elizabeth will sign off. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, this one's already signed off. Smart out has collapsed. Yes. Huzzah. <laughs> Can we get a picture of what this looks like? I I have a hard time visualizing how the when they Yeah, I had a question for John too, if he's still John, are you still with us? Yeah, um so I know that originally it was to collapse everything except for the top level. And I'm glad that you advocated for collapsing everything because even the top level can be very full. Um so when you uh, I'm. Am I right that you tested this on a server other than this one? Correct. Yeah, it's on so, a local server. Um. So when it expands, now when you hit like the templates expander, does it then, uh, just expand the top level and then you go through and you can expand further than that if you want to, or does it expand everything? It looks to me like when you go here, this is this is not the one that he signed off on. Oh, okay. So this one is set up to have the top levels, top level folders expanded, but not the subfolders. But the one that John signed off on has everything ex everything oh, collapsed when you okay. start off. Got um, it. Got it. Got it. If I'm, if you want, if I'm able to, I can share my screen real quick. If you want to take a look at it. All right, it's um, all set for you. Well, and having everything collapsed is the closest to the current behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it still says that the host has disabled participant oh. screen sharing. All right, try now. Okay, there we go. So let's go here. Okay. So this is how it starts. It starts collapse like the the old reporter, which is it, it's one of those things where I, you know I played around with the expanded one, but I really think they should start collapse. It just gets too cluttered uh, cluttered otherwise. Um, and if you click on one, it stays open, and that continues to stay open. Um, but one of the things that's kind of nice is if I go to clone this, for example, and I select my folder over here it's going to collapse it after I select it. Oh, so it nice. kind of interacts. Um, and then the same thing happens if I go back here and um, let's just build a report. After you do that, can you then create also a subfolder off of one of your folders so it can see what that looks like? Yeah. So same thing here. When I select my folders, they collapse and it's, it's all very nice. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so if you want, you want me to add a subfolder? Yeah. It, it Is that just, what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, fantastic. That's what I was hoping it would do. So yeah, that it so doesn't, I'm... it doesn't expand everything when you do that first level of expanding. Mm -hmm. Great. That's awesome. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, John. All right, we're almost at the end, um, but we're at the top of the hour. So if people have to go, I, I understand. Um, hopefully we can just get through these last couple and then um, set everybody loose. Actually, is this the, is this the last one? <laughs> oh yeah, okay, that was the last one because this one is the one that we added 
um, at the end from Jennifer's. So uh, now that we're we're at the top of the hour here, were there any other bugs or anything that anyone wanted to bring up? I think that was a good good overview. I don't think I saw anything past the initial ones we were talking about that I would consider blockers. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Taryn, are you are you still here? I know there's another group that started, so um, I'm here. Are are there any other uh, reports bugs that you know of that are going to get loaded onto test servers? Potentially, um, I didn't really look through them. Let me see. There are some. I'll share the on the second um, tab of the in the okay. spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. There's a report section, and it shows um, if there's on the column that says on a test. There's okay. some blank spots, so those aren't loaded onto test servers. So um, there's one, two, three, four. Oh no, one of them sent off already. So there's three more that haven't been loaded. And in terms of the security, would, would that go oh, to yeah. another group to sign off on that? Or would that happen? And I, I didn't look at what that actually means. So that I think was... there is already a sign off from BC Co-op on that one. We've on signed it off. Security. Oh, it is signed off. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah. So um, All right. I, I would I be delighted. I'm hoping somebody else will commit it who's more familiar with it. Yeah, I know that be up as well as you can actually be delighted to see that go in since it just missed the cutoff for 313. So, and to anticipate any of your questions, that is more or less or that I mean, it's built on top of the old reports branch, but it's it's like orthogonal in terms of what it does, so it's not going to like re break any of these bugs that we just <laughs> talked about and patched and you know, all of that. So oh, and just they, essentially those two then. Yeah, and the the update circulating library, that's just a terminology change. And I just put in the patch for that last night. Cool. Thank you, Taryn. And it that may was... re it may yeah. require more discussion since I picked a few other places to add it. So okay. I don't know if everyone will agree with me. <laughs> Solid. Curious about this one. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it looks like this was tested on another bug squash time. Okay, so this is a needs work situation. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's solid work, though. Look at all that stuff. Not very yeah. many things there at all. All right. Very exciting. Thanks, everyone. All right. So I believe that our next meeting, well, I know it'll be the last week of September at this point. Um, we don't really have a planned topic yet, or did we Did we decide on something, Elizabeth? I can't remember. <laughs> no, I think, I it, think we're kind of flowing organically with the needs of the community. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Biblio should have... I, I keep saying it, but we should have a, a working 313 test instance up pretty soon. So we can start talking about like rolling out and uh, training staff on the new uh, Angular reporter, if that's of interest to folks. Um, and what version are you moving from? 311. 311, okay. Yeah. And we don't have like a date for an upgrade or anything yet. We usually do it like at the sometime in the first quarter of the of the year, but um, it's going to depend on 
how many things that might be, um, you know, blockers for for our users that uh, and and what needs to be what needs to be be fixed for us to move forward. As it is with everyone, I think. <laughs> I have some late breaking Equinox developer Ooh. nagging reports. Um, multi select, quote, mm -hmm. coming right up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as in, like, uh, presumably, like, by the end of today. Hot off. Uh, and that was Stephanie? That was Stephanie and Mike. Yeah. Um, I knew she was working out for something now, so I'm super excited. Yeah. No, it's. um. Bugs Rush Week is work. a difficult time for me to like keep them doing the things that like they need to be doing sometimes. <laughs> Everything gets squashed instead of wrangled. Everything's fine. Um, well, no, I mean, it's just constantly juggling chainsaws yeah, over here. And, and, and sometimes I got to be like, no, you can't fix this today. You've got to fix this other thing. <laughs> but since I wasn't here for three days, it's now complete chaos in the dev department. But <laughs> Absolutely. Good chaos. multi is coming right up. Filterable boxes uh, coming somewhat later. Thursday, question mark. I'm reading this verbatim from Slack. Nice. And uh, the reason that filters were the shortcut for filters was done the way it was, which does not mean that it should always and forever be that way, but it has to do with the fact that they're, depending on the grid and columns, there might be either client side or server side or both. I, and at the I time, completely understand. There wasn't all of the um, server side sort requires a lot more work and a lot more in indices indexes. My so. complaining is is has no, nothing no, no. to do with. I, I completely that, understand the technicalities, and I, I know that you it, know yes. that. But I wanted yes. to make sure that other people on this call understand that. Yes, thank thank you for clearing and I uh, clarifying, and I think that I need to because clarify it wasn't. That I it am wasn't complaining. A, oversight and it is a valid complaint it yep. was a yep. choice made to get things done at the time but um, i do i do recall that it was also an issue in angular js which i did put in that ticket um and maybe for the exact same reason it probably for the exact same reason yeah um on the fly sort for large data tables is actually hard oh yeah you have to index things mm -hmm. i know i was thinking so. okay what in what id do you give the letter a capital what id do you give the letter a lowercase oh wait let's talk about internationalization right um but yeah so just for anybody on the call who was like wow they don't do case <laughs> sort or filtering it was a deliberate trade-off um doesn't mean it should always be that way hug your database it can't help it <laughs> it can't hug your hug galen who is a vast hug galen too is he a database me. though he kind of is. A database. Yes. yes. <laughs> I know, right? See, this is valid. I, you, Hug your database. You're right. Because I've also asked him a similar version of this question like 16 times in the last 10 years. <laughs> Galen Sequit <laughs> SQL. I'm going to tell him this. Mm -hmm. Galen is the best kind of database. <laughs> Things overheard in reports interest group. <laughs> select star from Galen and then you know, we all crash because we can't handle it. <laughs> and then he goes on a cruise and we don't know how to function we, we did just fine it's fine they burned down having... we even had a board meeting <laughs> did. I'm having such a hard time imagining Galen on a cruise <laughs> oh with no oh. cats I know <laughs> <laughs> What's he gonna do? They have, to have, they have cats on cruise ships, though, right? I don't know. I didn't ask him. I, I ask. mean, have any? I mean, he was with his wife. There was a library on the cruise. Oh, well, there you oh, go. Well, he did send us a picture of the library. Yeah. I think he's now. been the first person that ever entered that library. <laughs> he did lament their lack of an ILS, but agreed that it was probably more of a Koha scaled system than an evergreen one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless, unless there's unless a consortium was... of cruise ships. Yes. Oh, there you yes. Go. <laughs> I'm thinking all of Viking cruises have a shared ILS. Yeah. And they meet little... up in the middle of somewhere and like do resource sharing. In the middle of the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Or helicopters. <laughs> oh, God. 
the drone deliveries between ships. Yes, drones, yes. Oh, I was thinking they just throw it across. <laughs> Put it I in mean, a bottle. That's, <laughs> leave that's somebody on special a raft. resource sharing. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've definitely heard a story from my sister-in-law, who's a Marine, that that's like they have done that. Like literally, oh, chuck things from things ship to ship, yeah, ships, particularly yeah. personal packages. I mean, spice of life, sure. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Do some angular bucket stuff. Thank you. Go Thank you, Andrea, bugs. for your for your live dev wrangling <laughs> yeah thank you. i mean thanks you all for your testing and reporting peace y'all bye yeah. bye